As soon as Tom saw me, he pleaded, Please take care of me, huh? Why should I? I blurted out reflexively. Who's got the nerve to say that? I wonder who was it that said, No way, ask someone else. When I was hospitalized with a broken bone, you got what you deserved. Be thankful you even survived. I'm not going to extend a helping hand to Tom anymore. I'm Susan Clearwater, 32 years old. Five years ago, I married my husband Tom, and we have a son named Asher and a Shiba Inu named Champ. We're a family of three plus one pet. Tom works at a major IT firm and is super busy all the time. He leaves for work early in the morning, and it's not uncommon for him to get home past midnight. He often works on weekends, and once a month he's out of town on business trips. Thanks to this, Tom barely has any time to spend with the family, and he hardly ever plays with Asher. Tom's career has been on the up and up, and he made it into a managerial position in his 30s. The dream of mine to build a house within the loop of the subway came true, because Tom worked his fingers to the bone. My childhood home was in the countryside, where my family were full-time farmers. That's why I've always had this strong desire for a suburban house with a yard in the city. I'm grateful to Tom because Asher and I live comfortably. I've come to terms with the fact that family time is scarce. To outsiders, we might seem like a blessed family. However, with Tom being away so often, I'm left to shoulder the child care and housework alone. It's what you call solo parenting. I wanted to put Asher in daycare and go back to work, but Tom insisted on a kindergarten that also teaches. So Asher goes to preschool. As a result, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have a dear friend who's a real pillar of strength to me. She's Mitzi, a childhood friend of mine. She's the same age as me, and we're from the same rural area. By coincidence, our kids go to the same preschool. Mitzi got divorced last year, and now she's a single mom. Having tea at my place after Asher goes to preschool has become my only breather. We talk about the frustrations with Tom and the challenges of parenting. It was during these chats with Mitzi that I realized it. I seem to have developed some resentment towards Tom without knowing it. People often told me that harboring complaints would bring bad luck, and I believe that too. Maybe I was just telling myself that I shouldn't feel discontented. One day, while walking Champ, he suddenly took off running. I chased after him frantically. There was a car stopped ahead, and while Champ managed to avoid it, I couldn't, and ended up hitting the parked car. It was totally my fault. Champ looked on from the sidewalk, worried. It was good that Champ was unharmed, but I couldn't get up. I was taken to the hospital by ambulance and ended up being admitted with a bruised shoulder and a fractured ankle. It looks like I'll be hospitalized for about three months. Now that I'm hospitalized, I'm wondering who will take care of Asher, and there's the house to think about. Once I start worrying, there seems to be no end. I called Tom's cell phone. I thought he would cooperate at a time like this, but he didn't answer, just kept going to voicemail. While I was fretting, Mitzi called. It was to discuss costumes for the preschool play, but I cut the conversation short to ask her to look after Asher. Mitzi was initially surprised and concerned for me, but she agreed to take care of Asher after hearing that my voice was stronger than she expected. I was so grateful I almost cried. Next, I called my mother. I told her about the accident and that I'd be in the hospital for a few weeks. My mother said she would come up to the city and would come to the house after she sorted out her affairs. Until my mother can come, Mitzi will have to do. After I hung up with my mother, Tom finally called back. He said he was sorry for being busy and not able to answer the phone. I told him about the accident and asked him to bring some clothes and other things. I needed. But his response was unbelievable. No way. Why do I have to do that? I have an early day tomorrow. Ask someone else. I had thought that Tom would be worried about me, but the surprise was on me. It wasn't the refusal to bring my things that shocked me. It was the lack of concern. I had wanted Tom to care more about me and our family. Perhaps I was naive to expect any tender words from him.
The next day, Mitzi came to visit me in the hospital. She brought me a change of clothes and other necessities from my house. Mitzi has a spare key to my house. I have a spare key to Mitzi's house as well. We've always agreed to help each other out in times of need. I brought plenty of towels. Let me know if you need anything else, she said. I couldn't help but feel grateful for Mitzi's thoughtfulness. Her kindness was a stark contrast to Tom's attitude the day before. I was so touched that I almost burst into tears. Mitzi, you're overreacting, she said as she laughed and handed me a handkerchief. Mitzi is the complete opposite of me in personality. Calm and adept at reading the room, always empathizing with others. I've never seen Mitzi get into a fight with anyone. She's planning to get a qualification and work outside the home. Unlike me, she's nothing like me. How's your injury? You should take better care of yourself. I found comfort in Mitzi's ever-gentle tone. Don't worry about Asher. He stayed over at my place last night and slept with my kids without me having to say anything. Mitzi understood what I was going through. I wonder why Tom is so indifferent to us. He's busy, I get that. But he hasn't even come to visit you or seen Asher, right? I vented my frustrations about Tom to Mitzi as I visited with her. Mitzi smiled kindly at me as I sighed and lamented. Men have their way, don't they? He's probably dealing with stress at work that we can't understand, Mitzi suggested. That might be true, but not showing up, not worrying. That seems a bit too much. But he's working late, not out playing, right? That's true. We have a comfortable life in our own home because of Tom. He provides more than enough financially. Somehow Mitzi's words made me feel better. Let me know if there's anything I can do. I can make time, so I'll come to visit whenever you need. Venting to Mitzi gave me a bit of relief. I'll plan to have a serious talk with Tom after I'm discharged. More than anything, I wanted to see Asher. My mom came all the way from the countryside to help, and somehow I got through the three weeks of hospitalization and returned home. Mom had to head back to the countryside right after dropping me off due to farm work. My home, which I hadn't seen for weeks, felt incredibly nostalgic. The one who greeted me was Champ. Maybe Champ thinks the crutches are an enemy because he keeps barking at them. Sitting on the sofa, I looked around the living room. Nothing had changed. Indeed, there's no place like home. Even though I settled down on the sofa, Champ wouldn't stop barking at me. Come on, I can't use the crutches anymore. What's up, Champ? Champ stuck his head into my bag and pulled out a handkerchief. It was the one I had intended to return to Mitzi. I had put it in my bag to wash it back at home. Champ started tugging at the hem of my pants. It seemed like he was trying to lead me somewhere. I struggled to my feet and followed Champ, crutches in hand. He marched excitedly ahead. Champ stopped in front of our bedroom and scratched at the door to open it. Why the bedroom, Champ? What's in there? Without hesitation, Champ stuck his head under the bed and pulled something out in his mouth. It looked like a piece of fabric with a pretty pattern. Champ dropped it in front of me. It looked familiar. When I spread it out, it turned out to be a scarf. I felt like I had seen it a few weeks ago. Yes, Mitzi was wearing it. I saw it when she visited me in the hospital. But why would that scarf be here? A disturbing thought crossed my mind. No, no, that couldn't be it. After all, Mitzi is my childhood friend, my best friend. She's kind. I shook my head vigorously to dispel the terrible thought. Then Champ climbed onto the bed and started pulling at the sheets. I felt the blood drain from my body. If what Champ was indicating was true, then it meant that Mitzi had been sleeping in our bed. Mitzi's friendly face flashed across my mind. It had to be an overreaction. I told Champ that it couldn't be possible that Mitzi was sleeping here. Mitzi wouldn't be sleeping here, right? Champ responded by gently licking my face. In the afternoon, Asher returned home. When he saw me, he hugged me tight. 
Asher truly is my sunshine. I felt my spirits lift and warmth flood my heart. Hugging Asher back, I tentatively asked him, Where did you sleep while mommy was in the hospital? In my own room. Mitzi and her kids slept over too. It was fun, he replied. What did that mean? I thought Asher had stayed over at Mitzi's place. Didn't Mitzi say that? My doubts only grew. Then, where had Mitzi slept? I boldly asked Asher where Mitzi had been sleeping. I don't know, but she and Daddy talked in the living room late into the night. They probably drank some wine too, Asher said. I left Asher and went back to the bedroom alone and stood there in silence. It couldn't be that Tom and Mitzi had spent time together in this bed, that my husband, who is indifferent to me and our family, could have slept here with Mitzi. I just couldn't believe that. Or maybe it's more accurate to say I didn't want to believe it. The bed was neatly made, no sign of disarray in the sheets or comforter. But maybe some sense just can't be completely removed, and there was a forgotten item that Champ would notice. Since this suspicion arose, I can't bring myself to sleep in that bed anymore. I've started sleeping with Asher instead. Asher seems happy about it and doesn't find it strange. Tom has become a repulsive presence to me. Various thoughts keep crossing my mind, leading to many sleepless nights. Where did we go wrong as a couple? When the cast came off my foot, Tom left the house unusually cheerful. I had a bad feeling about it. While waiting for the preschool pickup bus, Mitzi showed up. You're all dressed up today. Your makeup is a bit more extravagant than usual, isn't it? I asked casually, trying not to let on. Mitzi smiled unabashedly and told me, I've met someone special. There's no clear evidence, but it seems Mitzi is doing something despicable. Mitzi is in love with the very person she shouldn't be. I struggled to hide my trembling, furious hands. After parting ways with a beaming Mitzi, I walked home in a daze. I can't just let Tom and Mitzi carry on like this. I'm going to put an end to it once I can move around freely. I've decided to take action against them both. That night, I told Tom that Asher and I would be going back to my parents' house next week and invited him to come along. I'm not going. I've got work. You two go ahead, he said. I had already figured that Tom wouldn't go, but what irked me was his smile. He asked me when we were leaving and when we'd be back. Despite his lack of interest, he seemed to care about knowing exactly when the house would be empty. I didn't miss the smirk on his face as he fiddled with his smartphone. The five days back home were wonderful. Asher was fascinated with the farming, spending every day in the fields with my dad, enjoying playing in the dirt. On the way home, Asher repeatedly said, I had fun. I want to come back again. The thought of the confrontation that awaited us at home weighed on me. After we got back from my parents, Tom suddenly announced he'd be going on a week-long business trip. He'd been on trips before, but they were at most two nights. A whole week seemed suspicious. When I looked puzzled, Tom started talking about work more than he usually would, saying, I'll be visiting a lot of clients, might even land a big contract. Perhaps he was trying to hide his guilt, yet despite that, Tom was in high spirits, humming a tune. To an outsider, it would look like he was preparing for a trip rather than a business trip. Tom left early in the morning. Moreover, he left saying, I'm off, which he doesn't usually say. I heard the engine start from outside. He wouldn't need a car for a business trip. Something felt off, so I went outside and saw that our car was still parked in the garage. Back inside, I casually checked the shoe cabinet and noticed Tom's hiking shoes were missing. You wouldn't pair hiking shoes with a suit. When I checked the closet, Tom's outdoor jacket was also missing. What kind of business trip was this supposed to be? But the fact was, Tom would be gone for a week. I was glad I wouldn't have to see his face for a while. By this time, I had no romantic feelings for Tom whatsoever. A few days later, after dropping Asher off at daycare, I was cleaning the house when my phone rang. It was an unknown number, 
so I answered wearily. The call was from a hospital in the mountains near our home. Shocked by what they told me, I hurried to the hospital. I picked up Asher from preschool and rushed to my parents' house. In the car, I explained briefly to Asher that Tom had gotten lost during a camping trip and slipped, falling down into a ravine. He was alive, but he had sustained an open fracture in his leg and bruises all over his body. Luckily, he was rescued by the local volunteer firefighters. If it hadn't been for them, he would have been in real trouble. At first, Asher was joking around, saying things like, That's just like Mom. But when I told him about the danger to his dad's life, he suddenly got serious and started to worry. I left Asher at my parents' house and headed to the hospital. Turns out Tom's business trip was a lie. I knew it, but I couldn't contain my anger. I couldn't help but think I was too kind for bringing Tom's change of clothes and other stuff. And there was one more thing, an important envelope that I also brought with me. When I arrived at the hospital and asked about Tom, they told me he was in the ICU undergoing treatment. While waiting in the waiting room, I heard cries of pain. It seemed to be Tom's voice. I was worried, of course, but part of me also thought it was divine retribution. After a while, a nurse took me to the ICU. In the ICU, Tom was crying out in pain and anxiety, his body racked with agony, his neck immobilized, and his body wrapped in bandages. If Asher saw him, he'd probably make a fuss about him looking like a mummy. It was quite an embarrassing sight. As soon as Tom saw me, he begged, Please take care of me. Why should I? The words just came out reflexively. I wondered who had the cheek to say that when I had a broken bone and was hospitalized. Who was it that said, I don't want to find someone else? Then the curtain of the bed next to me was pulled back, and I screamed. There was Mitzi, no hiding it. She'd gone camping with Tom after all. Mitzi was hurt, just like Tom was. Her arms and legs were bandaged, not to mention her face and head. The area around her eyes was severely bruised. She probably couldn't move as she wanted. Tom hadn't noticed the curtain opening. His face was fixed, and with the pain, he probably couldn't focus on anything else. Tom vented his pain and frustration at being immobilized on me. Do you have any idea what my pain feels like? Don't just stand there, get to taking care of me. Tom had slid down more than ten meters to the bottom of a valley. Of course, he was in pain. He should just be grateful he's alive. I have no idea what your pain feels like. I snapped back at Tom. I had reached my limit. Tom lied about a business trip to go camping with Mitzi, got in an accident, caused a lot of trouble for everyone, and now he's making a fuss about being nursed. After everything, he still makes a fuss, demanding to be nursed. It's your own doing. Just be thankful you were saved. That's it for me helping Tom. Our marriage, Tom's and mine, had already ended. I decided to end it all today, right here. Mitzi was here too. It was perfect. I decided to settle things once and for all. I decided to steadily corner Tom. I didn't care about his pain from the injuries right now. Justice is on my side. Does your company call camping business trips, or were all your important clients at the campground? Maybe I wasn't going to ease up. I kept pressing Tom. Is there really a need for an IT guy to go to some remote mountain where you can get lost? Tom glared at me with tearful eyes enduring the pain. Shut up. It's none of your business. You went back to your folks' place too, didn't you? Don't you start criticizing me. What an outrageous thing to say. I was honest about going back to my family's home, but Tom lied. I did lie, did I? Did you have some reason you had to lie, Tom? Just glared at me and said nothing. Probably couldn't come up with a comeback. I turned my back on the silent Tom and looked down at Mitzi. Did you take a tumble following Tom's lead, Mitzi? Her face contorted with pain, managed to speak. Yes, I was trying to help Tom and slipped down with him. What was supposed to be a fun camping trip turned into quite the disaster, huh? I snorted through my nose. 
It's not what you think, Susan. It's a misunderstanding, Mitzi retorted weakly through her pain. What misunderstanding? It's all true, isn't it? I'm the one who insisted Tom go camping. I know this area well and knew of a great spot off the beaten path. Mitzi was trying to cover for Tom. Maybe she fancies herself the tragic heroine. Please, if you're going to blame anyone, blame me. Tom did nothing wrong. Mitzi was sobbing. The more she spoke, the less believable she sounded. But she kept going. I never meant to hurt you and I never thought it would come to this. I'm truly sorry. She seemed drunk on her own tears. Her words so insincere, her words ring hollow. I'm the one who feels like crying. Tom, noticing Mitzi's voice, interrupted our conversation. I was just going along with Mitzi's hobby. You can't just say no to an invitation from your best friend, can you? Tom seems determined not to admit to the affair. So the business trip was indeed a lie. Tom began to get rattled. Mitzi, still playing the tragic heroine, kept egging Tom on. Both of you, just stop. If you continue this disgraceful affair, you'll get what's coming to you. Again, it seems like I'm about to deliver karma to Tom and Mitzi right here. I'm done playing along with this self-indulgent charade. I took out an envelope that I brought from home. From my bag, I pulled out photographs and scattered them across Tom and Mitzi's beds. Tom and Mitzi were speechless, mouths half open, eyes wide open as if in complete shock. The photographs showed Tom and Mitzi arm in arm entering a hotel and intertwining hands as they entered my home. I had hired a private investigator when Champ found Mitzi's scarf on the bed. Tom, who had secret meetings not just while Asher and I were visiting home, turned bright red and exploded in anger. How could you do such a thing? Keeping hidden photos is underhanded. I only went to dinner with her when you were hospitalized with a fracture. Tom's blatantly defensive reaction almost made me burst out laughing. Mitzi, on the other hand, was still a sobbing mess. Mitzi was crying with her face in her hands, but I could see her peeking through her fingers. Maybe Mitzi had the weaker position. Tom's tantrum continued. This is nonsense. You must have fabricated this. With a slight movement of his hand, Tom brushed off the photographs. So you're not admitting it? I didn't want to do this, but I sighed heavily and pulled out an IC recorder from my bag. I had placed it under the bed in our bedroom. I could hear Tom and Mitzi gulp. Sweat dripped down from under Tom's bandages. I took my time looking at them both before pressing the play button. Don't tease me. Stop making me wait. I hit the stop button and asked Mitzi, Can't you take it anymore? Hey, want to hear the rest? Mitzi shook her head in silence, lost for expression. It seemed she was no longer up for acting the part of the crying woman. Stop it, please, just stop, my husband murmured in a small voice. I asked Mitzi when their affair had started. I was jealous of you. I had failed in my marriage. Yet, there you were, living in such a nice house, leading a luxurious life, and all you did was complain about Tom. So, I thought I'd take him for myself. It all started with Mitzi's jealousy, I guess. The grass always looks greener on the other side. If Tom became mine, I could have that kind of life too. What's so wrong with that? Mitzi defiantly said. She was unapologetic, playing the victim as if none of it was her fault. While listening to our exchange, Tom tried to snatch the IC recorder from my hand, lunging forward. Careful, I warned Tom, but he moved too abruptly, struck by a sharp pain and lost his balance, falling off the bed. Tom didn't make a sound. He seemed to have passed out. Mitzi looked on at Tom, shocked. I pressed the nurse call button to summon the nurse. They arrived quickly, and I was urged to leave the ICU. Once I stepped into the hallway, I realized my legs were shaking. I had spoken boldly, but I was actually very scared. I started divorce proceedings while Tom was still in the hospital. My lawyer said I had plenty of evidence of infidelity to proceed favorably with the divorce. 
I would demand alimony and child support from Tom, but that alone wasn't enough punishment for Tom. I made sure the division of marital assets was executed thoroughly. The house was sold and the proceeds split, along with our savings accounts and stocks and investment products divided in half. Tom's parents came to me sincerely apologizing. They promised to oversee the payment of the alimony and child support. Asher, who loves his grandparents, promised to visit them from time to time. I filed for settlement for emotional damage against Mitzi. She'll have to pay back every penny, even if it's little by little. The accident left me with a permanent limp in one leg. I can't get around without a cane. Tom's condition was much worse, nearly leading to an amputation. He's lost the use of both legs and will be in a wheelchair for life. A business trip that was actually a cover for an affair. He was severely reprimanded by his company for the accident. The company demoted him as a disciplinary action. No one in the company sympathized with Tom. He faced cold stares and felt isolated. Having lost the house and with his savings depleted from paying alimony and child support, Tom is living in an old apartment. It's obviously not barrier-free, so he's struggling with daily life. Tom's father recently updated me on the situation. Tom and Mitzi have split up. For Mitzi, a wheelchair-bound Tom was not someone she wanted anymore. Neither Tom nor Mitzi expected their lives to turn out this way. They must be regretting that if only they had stopped themselves at that moment. If only they hadn't lied. But it's too late for regrets now. Asher and I decided to move back with my parents. With the support of my parents and Asher now in daycare, I found the time to take a job at a local real estate company. I'm studying hard to get several real estate certifications. Asher really loves the increased interaction with nature here. He's overjoyed with life in this place. Every morning before the sun even rises, he goes out to the fields with Grandpa to take care of the crops. Asher loves watching Grandpa operate the tiller. He must think his Grandpa is a hero. After helping in the fields, Asher heads off to daycare, where he plays to his heart's content before coming home. He's gotten a lot tanner compared to when we were in the city, and he seems much sturdier. Thinking about Asher living surrounded by nature rather than in the city might have been the better choice. The grandparents are also enjoying every day, smiling all day long in the lively household. Champ, the unsung hero of this story, seems to be enjoying life here too. He used to be reluctant to go for walks, but now he's eager every morning. He also loves the fields and playing in the mud with Asher and my father. Recently, we had a family picnic by the river, and Asher suddenly stood up. I want to be just like Grandpa when I grow up. My father beamed with joy, ruffling Asher's hair. My mother looked on at Asher with joy in her eyes too.